everybody. I hope you got some extra coffee in while we were getting those technical difficulties. You know, I think in roofing and in life in general, you just got to go with what's happening. So we couldn't get Charles on the go to meeting. So he's now on my cell phone and we're going to chat and we're going to have a conversation this morning. So it'll be all good. So welcome to Coffee Conversations with Rupert's Coffee Shop. My name is Heidi Ellsworth, and I am a partner at Rupert's Coffee Shop. We have Megan Ellsworth, our show engineer, who's helping out to try to keep us all in line. And <laughs> very exciting, we have Charles Antis, CEO and founder of Antis Roofing and Waterproofing out of Southern California. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, again, Heidi. Good morning, <laughs> Megan. Good morning. That is great. So, okay. Charles, we have some questions that are going to start coming in. We have people coming in um, to the show and listening. So this is very exciting. But you know what? To kind of get us started, why don't you tell us one of the things we love to hear is from all over the country, what's happening. So what's happening in Southern California with you and Antis and um, roofing in general? Well, you know, we can't talk about what's going on today without discussing this pandemic and the way, and the way it affects the way we wake up in the morning. And so I would say I'll talk about how it feels and a little bit to what's gone on. As you read in the news, California was an area that um, there were regulations and restrictions put out right away. And this was good in a sense because at first, we needed to know what to do. We couldn't understand. But we also saw in California um, um, uh, the threat of being able to perform that essential service initially. Um, and there was a disagreement among people, even within companies, about what was essential or not. And so we walked through that with these restrictions and regulations. And then we watched California put a series of safety devices in there, like the wearing of face masks, social distancing, and and with and we were able uh, to perform our essential service of keeping folks sheltered um, with no threat of being able to shut down. Once it was established, we could do so with a safe protocol, and that was not easy because there was an educating that had to occur within the companies individually for this to effectively take place. And that I watched that happen. I watched companies evolve. The more safe, conscious environment, I watched our company evolve to where now I think the threat of things that can hurt one of our teammates is taken more seriously. So there's a lot of good that comes out in some of this if we stay busy. And we were also, like I said, fortunate to be blessed with rain. You know, the weather does help. Uh, across the country, we're seeing a lot of weather. And with the rain hitting in California, they did. And, you know, that kind of led in, Charles, to what are your H I mean, I know you guys are focused. You do just an amazing job with HOAs and facility management. What are you hearing from some of your customers about what's going on? Well, at first, there was a, everybody was frozen, and, and I remember, if everyone's honest, we've all been frozen, and we're still frozen because our brains can't possibly comprehend what we haven't walked through before. And so, at first, there was a lot of freezing, people doing nothing, and one of the areas that the leadership in Antis showed up, and you know Susan DeGrazzi, she's a national woman in roofing board member, and she's a VP of Antis. She really stood there because she spent 30 years in the property management industry. And so she was able to, I think more effectively than me, because together we're stronger, she was able to effectively take the message out to the in California, listed property managers, you have the fiduciary responsibility to take care of this property. And it's essential that you do, because this is what protects your family. And I mean, I, I sort of ripped on that right now, but she made that strong point, and, and I love that, and I love it. So we were able to help lead that, and not just us. There were law firms that were really setting the standards, and right now, we've seen this adjust. where property managers are now having virtual meetings like we are right now, but electronics generally work better when hopefully that way it's. But the, 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 we're having this change occurring, and a lot of it is good change. Some of, it is, some of it is by necessity, but when you go through this crunch of those things we've been playing with for the years, all those electronics that we bought, all those apps that we bought, right now when we need them, we are, it is the fire and we're seeing what 
steel comes from it. And there's a lot of, if we keep our eyes open and, and look at this glass half full as much as we possibly can each and every day we wake up, we are really seeing some so what works right now, and and that can be um, in a in a in a still way. It's a super adaptive time. What works right now may not work next week. We're still changing. The new normal of the day is not going to be the new normal of next month. Right. Exactly. Uh, and you know that new normal, and everybody's trying to kind of figure it out. But a lot is working through. Um, working with your customers, understanding what their needs are. But, you know, a lot of people are on this morning, Charles, because they know you and they know how passionate you are about really believing in cause and giving back. And so what are you kind of learning from what you've done with your core values of Antis over the last, you know, how are you, you know, a lot of years, um, and how are you applying that right now? Because I know you're doing a lot of really cool things. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't know how to answer that, but I'll start, and you can steer me back. <laughs> you know, I, I just, you know, I think uh, I'm able to live with some philosophies that what used to be held tight within, because it, I think I was afraid that if I shared them, I would be held accountable by them, and that scared me. And so I think although I tried to do the right thing, like my dad told me, I was afraid to claim, hey, I'm doing the right thing, like my dad told me. And today, I'm able to claim that because I've learned that I, I should be held to a standard. I've learned that by claiming that, that people will stay. And, the, you know, and most uh, philanthropy, as it was born, corporate social responsibility, it was born the big companies. It didn't just occur so people would like you more on the outside. It really occurred so you could have purpose on the inside. And so, and just we evolved into being a company. You've heard me joke about how in the beginning I could have made roofs and put a burden on everybody um, because it wasn't balanced. But but it has just been developed a way, as a lot of great companies have that have given it, that shared the secret with us to find out what it is that fulfills our people. And if we do. They're they're happier at work, and that's where we spend most of our time. And most people in the world are unfulfilled. And now, in the roofing industry, we are particularly blessed with this great skill that no one else does. And we go out and protect every that people perish in this in this land. And there's this generosity that occurs because you've seen me, and you you know that I've said this many times that. I've almost felt sometimes cursed that I could never let anybody have a leaky roof just because they didn't have the money to pay. But as I look around, and I bet you as those, if you can hear me right now saying this, you've done the same thing. Because we're in this family of big-hearted people. And that's what I discovered. That the families, you know, roofing is a family business so much. You look at if it's, if it's not a family business, if you're the star of your company, if you're the founder, look at the people that work for you. There's a lot of families. And, you know, there's something powerful when you listen to your people and you see what fulfills them. And so sometimes you, what you do is you find out, what's the magic thing that really makes them feel like they're impacting the world and lets them sleep better at night and wake up better in the morning? And what if, what if we all had one thing that we all felt better about? And also our clients did too. And maybe they realize that when we get up in the morning, we're going to do the right thing without saying, doing the right thing. So I think that there's some kind of a magic that occurs when you're able to finally say that it's, you know, that I'm going to err on the side of generosity with all of my stakeholders. And when you can finally make that statement out loud, as scary as it is, I think that there's kind of a magic mix of who you start noticing that you're dealing with and the way business seems to reciprocate. So I do it today and I do it in this social pandemic because I see the needs and my people see the needs. Susan, I think you just mentioned, who is a VP for National Women, or is a VP in Antis and a board member with, with National Women Ripping. I almost said with you when you started that. But I mean, she, she's able to, to build to this and we're able to just do so much together. So I, I'm sorry, I got off on a tangent. I got excited. 
but but it's an exciting time because I was going to say Susan DeGrasse is also a board member of, of American Red Cross Southern California region. And we just agreed to another month's blood drive starting next month. Uh, and we're, do, we're donating 6,000 feet to Noah Vance's campus. And it's because our eyes are open because we talk about what matters. And, and it's what's really cool is this consulting company in Southern California gets to share with other business leaders on how we help our community. You know, we get to have a big voice. And it means so much to us because we really are those that protect everything that those that love. And it feels like when you get involved, when other people see you there, it feels really good. But then it used to see myself that high, Heidi. You've heard me say, I used to keep my hands in my pockets. And I was afraid to that let people see the caulking in my nails and the cracked thumbnail. And today, you know, the only thing I, I really wish you could see me because I use my hands when I talk. Because I'm not animated because I have passion for the trade and the great men and women that are united. There's millions of us in this industry that support it in distribution and manufacturing and application. And it's a, it's a fantastic industry. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see ourselves for who we really are. I'm sorry, I just talked for like 10 minutes. I know, Charles, that's all right. That's good. You know, I'm just really bummed that we don't have you on video right now so we could see your hands and we could see everything that you're doing and saying and moving. Um, you know, I would like to ask our folks who are out there, if you can just send a little note or question to Megan or just let us know if you can hear okay. Um, so just let us know how you're hearing it because if we need to stop for a minute and recall on a landline or try to do something like that, we will do it. Um, oh, I'm hearing everybody can hear great. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Yeah. Now we won't worry quite so much. Um, well, you know what, Charles, I want to talk more about the blood drive because I think that is pretty out of the box thinking. Um, when, you know, everybody's thinking, okay, what can we do? We're going to give away roofs or we're going to do, um, maybe we're going to make donations, but you've done a couple things since this started that are really out, just different that um, I th- I want everyone else to kind of think about what can they do with their space that's not being used right now. If they're all working remotely, that's what you did. You took your space and you turned it into a, um, you know, it got super sterilized and they are doing a blood drive in your office. Can you tell everybody how that happened? Yeah, well, it specifically happened, like I said, because we have a culture of there is enough and we're going to be generous inside and outside our company. And so there's a, you know, it's a California West Coast thing that, that I hate. I feel, hear myself saying sometimes, but we had this kind of abundant mindset. But, but we do. We, we believe that if we, we believe that if we say yes, that somehow there'll be enough. You know, it's some kind of a broad belief. And so in that mindset, things occur. Uh, you mentioned a couple of other things. Like we also got involved very little. I can't claim I did this a lot, but in food delivery. And the reason we got involved in food delivery is when the pandemic hit, we're in shock. We're seeing these these awful things happening on the news. California is bracing for this. I mean, it's it's a scary time. I forgot where I was going there. I got distracted. About oh, you. Yeah. So so at, the, at that moment, sorry, Heidi, at twins, every old twins. But I, you know, and that was going on. I didn't know what to do. I was a business owner, you know, you know, Charles, what are we going to do? And I didn't know. And I was scared. But I knew I had to study the ship here and tell my people we'll be okay with this. But out there, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do for the nonprofit boards I sit on, for Ronald McDonald's. I didn't know what to do for Habitat for Humanity. And so that's when I listened. And I listened to this thing that was real, that God, when this occurs, when people are sequestered at home, the elderly are really at risk because they're food insecure. They, they can't get the food and they can't congregate the way they used to. And therefore, we need to deliver food. And I thought, it took me a couple of things to understand that. But as I understood it and as I listened to the stories, we were able to raise our hand and get involved. I actually signed up today. Um, I, I may be delivering food at 3.45 p.m. to th- 31 trucks were called by Second Harvest Food Bank to deliver food to the homes of seniors. 
And so I get these texts from Second Harvest Food Bank because I found out this was a thing that people needed. And I can't tell you what way it is to show up with the brigaded trucks, other people just like me that donate some time, and we're given a list and we're given boxes, and we get to take these boxes to people that are lonely and scared and give them this. And that was a powerful experience, and I want to do it again. I haven't done it a lot. But I'm able to do it, and that's how the blood drive team up. The same way we read, we hear, oh my God, because people can't congregate in the way they used to to donate blood, all these blood drives were canceled. We needed more space in the plan, open blood drives, and we had this large open space at Ansys campus, it's like a Google type campus. We thought, will this work? And they said, yes, and they did two blood drives last month, and it was incredible. I know I skipped ahead, but what's really cool is our space is so open. They go, you know, we could do super drive here. Instead of taking enough blood to help getting set the people like we did last time we did it, we could open up and, and collect enough blood to help 300 people. And so it's just being open to opportunity, and, and there's some, I do have a mindset of this, I I make myself have a mindset of this, even when it feels like there's nothing there to give. I make myself always the baby. There's a really powerful uh, concept in your, and I don't know why, so don't like that. I have no idea why. But if, I, if I think in terms of maybe when I go to bed and I get up in the morning, people show up, product shows up, things show up, the idea shows up, and those that will do it, and all I did was say, Maybe all I did was say maybe. And so what I used to say was no, and I'll tell you why. There's not enough. No, we're not going to do this. No, we're not going to do that. I used to, do that. I used to you know, be the seagull boss, flapping my wings, squawking and shitting all over everybody <laughs> without realizing it, thinking I'm blessing them with my wisdom experience when really I needed to create a culture of failed. I need to create a culture that's adaptive, and that's where you have to be today. You have to be adaptive. I've always made myself be adaptive, but man, I'm sorry, it's years I went into being adaptive to survive today. But but one of the ways that you're adaptive and survive today is you matter to the people inside your company and out. If you matter inside, they stay in an industry where they don't stay most of the time. There's the 50% attrition rate plus. Um, but on the outside, people will know who you are, and they will know they can trust you because they're aligned with you in those things that you stand for, like an habitat. You stand for this belief that everybody has a decent place to live, that everyone deserves that. And if you align with Ronald McDonald, as the whole industry does, it means that you, like everyone else I love, think it is unimaginable to ignore sick children. And that is who we stand for. And that's why I do this. Because I wake up in the morning and I put on those socks. And I'm wearing them right now. And, you know, in fact, it was embarrassing morning. I had one brand new sock and one old one. They didn't match. But I was going to show them to you because I put on those Ronald McDonald House socks. Because I have every day for the last two and a half years. Because I've got a reason to put them on. I'm raising $13 million to double the size of the Ronald McDonald House. Um, and, you know, as the campaign chair, because I have a reason to put it on, like I did two years ago uh, when I, I wore them. So the roofing contractors of America would adopt 150 homes across the U.S., which they did. So when you have purpose and intention in everything you do, and I don't, but I try to, when I have purpose and intention in every step and every thought, when I get close to that, Man, that's when magic happens. And right now is a scary time. But our company has some comfort in knowing that we're aligned in purpose and we're aligned in why we exist. We exist to keep families safe and dry. And so when you know that and when you and when you believe in it, there's a lot of super adaptive environment that's starting to occur and it's riffing, which I know we'll move to, but I mean that's why we do this. We align with people inside and out. We become real and thought and intention, and we're able to stay together and design, and engineer, and adapt to provide the best roofs possible. So, Charles, on that, I, I want to kind of go back to because I mean that I, I, you know, I love this stuff, and I think it's it's perfect. But I kind of want to get down a little bit to like how in that one of the things that you've told me that I think is really 
really interesting is how you empower your team to be involved outside of Antis. So I want, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of teeing this up for Susan and that Susan is on the board of the Red Cross because you encourage that of everyone at Antis to be involved on boards, in nonprofits, outside of the roofing industry, whatever they need. And through that is how the blood drive came, right? Yes. And, and, can you just talk a little bit? I, I just love the fact that you encourage everyone on your team to be involved. What other organizations, you know, you're doing so many different things. How does that work with your team members from a cultural standpoint? So all the people listening can kind of maybe start thinking about incorporating this with their team, with their employees. Okay, so I, you know, Heidi, you know me. I'm going to talk about all sides of everything. I'm going to I'm going to laugh at the ego part of it, the the, or the part that yeah, that's the brand value, and then I'm going to talk about the real part of it, the real human part of it. And so, and Antis, one of the things that we believed in is corporate social responsibility. That's when corporations do good things, they're trusted more. But most people do this part for the internal value. The Golden State Foods huge multi-billion dollar company um they they don't talk about their giving but they're involved in major giving and the reason they are is that people stay in the company that is why and right now what imagine the difference you have in your company if you're competing against people where 50 percent of them are new than were last year and your company you held 90 percent so there's the reason why if, and so susan degrassi is on those several boards national and roofing american red cross I'm not going to quote any others because I might mess them up. But what that means is she's so happy to work at that first. That's what it's able to feel like for her because she's on board of something that's really powerful. Two things in this vision that are really powerful. This movement in roofing where we realize that women have so much to offer and women think differently than men and when men wants to go out and fight and protect a woman's brain wants to nurture all seven in the house and there's something powerful about that that she can do that and there's something powerful that she can get involved with the southern Kyle about more than a chapter of American Red Cross man she's got the best job she's ever had I mean that's, that's a practical reason and, and Aaron I'm encouraging you he's getting involved in King Base. And Audrey, our VP of finance, she's involved in Habitat, and she's had been off to be on other boards. What that means is they'll stay, and that is a huge practical reason to do this. But beyond that, they have purpose in every step. Susan Negrassi doesn't get rattled. Well, we all get rattled, but she knows why she's there, and she see, she plays the long game, and she does that because she sits once a month, shoulder to shoulder, or now. Zoom, zoom box to zoom box next to people who have what she wants. When you join a board, man, your character, your opportunity to be a better version of yourself, self skyrockets. I mean, I never saw myself as board material. I saw myself as a grouper that I dropped out of college and I didn't want to tell you about it. I didn't know how to call myself to make myself sound, sound better, a contractor or whatever. So anyway, I'm sorry, I got up. But I don't see myself now because I... I, I, I am on Habitat for Humanity board. I've been there for 10 years, and I get to go in there and help families stay together in a home protected by a roof that I've donated every, we've donated every Habitat for Humanity roof in Orange County for the last almost 11 years. And that feels really good. And I'm on the, I'm on the Ronald McDonald House board because I believe that we, families need to be kept, you know, close to their sick kids because I had, you know, six twins that were born premature and and it was only by keeping them close that they had a full chance for recovery, which they did. And so when I what I'm fulfilled, I'm fulfilled being on a college board, the Center for Leadership at Cal State University Bulletin. I you know, especially I didn't graduate college, but I'm there because I'm able to bring purpose into the discussion and intention into the discussion. So my point is, is I saw myself so low, but now that I don't, we're attracting better talent. In other words, you do it once people see that your VPs are board members, other great high 
potential candidates are going to want to work in your company. So there's all these practical reasons that I do it, but then there's this powerful return of investment where we're just all happier and we're better versions of ourselves. And I hope I, I probably swam all around that, didn't quite answer it, but well, sorry. Well, Charles, we have a couple of comments and questions coming in. So no, you're doing great. And we are making the best of a crazy situation here. So I, uh, I um, appreciate everybody also to um, hanging in there with the audio and video. But Megan, um, I know we have Rudy and Michelle and Greta are all out there. Maybe we can um, see who would like to come on the video and maybe make the comment. I know Greta just had one. And um, we're really covering the country here. Greta's from the Northeast and Michelle Boykin is from the South. And Rudy's from right down by Charles in um, Southern California. That, yeah. Greta. Can you share just a little bit with everyone, um, first of all, where you're located, your company, and um, a little bit about what's going on in your area, too, because that, that hits, per, I mean, coast to coast here. We're hearing the same thing. Of course, yeah. I'm located in Massachusetts. I'm the owner and founder of Golden Group Roofing. We primarily focus on residential roof replacements. Um, we are doing well. Um, we have obviously had about an 80% reduction on what we would normally be installing and estimating this time of year. But um, I'm very grateful that we at least have that 20% retention. And I think the reason we do is because we really have focused the last nine years of our existence really perfect the brand. And the brand can withstand impact. Of course, it's going to you know, be impacted, but at least we have not died altogether. You know, we still have, uh, we still generate leads through the brand. So we're not necessarily relying on search engines. And, um, you know, we're very, it's a scary time. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen. We're hoping to withstand as much as we possibly can while standing firm. Um, obviously, for our, our staff, it's, it's a lot of emotions going through them. Sometimes they're angry, sometimes they're depressed, sometimes they're happy. Every day is different. But I'm treating it as you would a disease from a psychological point of view, right? Like I deal with the emotions every day as a leader the way they come. And I'm very real with my team about the emotions I'm going through. I don't want to paint just rainbows. I want them to be, I want them to see that I feel the same things that they feel. And sometimes it's better to tell people that, look, I don't know what's going to happen. But that's okay because we're in it together. It's so much bigger than Golden Group. It's so much bigger than roofing. I don't lie to them. I don't sugarcoat them. Like, they come to me every day and they're like, well, do you know if we're going to be busy? Like, is this going to be okay? And I said to myself, I could say that to them, but what good leader would I be if I, if I painted unrealistic views to my team, right? So I share with them the ups and downs as I go through them every day. And together, we'll stand. And we'll, we'll stand until we no longer can. But I'm doing everything in my power to... Um, to uh, to take as much of the impact, you know. If you picture it's like a train, right? I'm at the I'm at the I'm ho I'm at the <laughs> at the very front of it, and and I'm standing against it as much as I can, so the impact isn't felt on the other passengers on board, and those passengers being my team. Yeah, these are all incredible things, and I just wanted to make a statement um, along with what was just said. The reason for me with the community involvement, the reason why I really promote that every roofer uh, goes a little bit deeper into their community is especially when we're trying to promote the trade to college individuals. We want them to feel proud when they are in a room with their IT friends or in the room with their, you know, friends that are working in marketing or sales and other uh, Fortune 500 companies. We want them to feel equally empowered. And I learned it very early in the game that sometimes I would watch my staff and they wouldn't really say that they worked for a roofing. <laughs> they would, like, make a very fancy name. And I one time I sat down with them and I said, is there a purpose while you're withholding that you're working for, you know, a roofing company. And they said, yeah, because it doesn't feel that great to say that I have found a career that's rewarding in, in roofing. And I said, well, what can I do about that? And they're like, well, can you make uh, our purpose, like, bigger? Can you find us ways, not necessarily to pay us more money, but can you find ways for us to be deeper involved so we feel prouder to say that we work for a roofing company? And that's when I said, uh-huh, like, this is exactly what I have to do. And this was about three years ago, and ever since then, I really started not only myself as a leader, but with my team to really push the involvement of boards, community involvement, um, associations, whether it was in roofing or not. I wanted every person on my team to rep be represented. Wow. That is cool. And you know what? I think both Greta and Charles 
and Charles, maybe you can speak to this, but you know, we're all we're all fighting this pandemic and the COVID and stuff. But what I'm hearing is the companies like Greta, like yours, like everybody I'm seeing on here. Um, we, it's really about that culture ahead of time. Yeah, so I, well, the last thing Greta said uh, alluded to what we're going into, and I, 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 I put sure to ship at sea. So let me run with that metaphor on what we're going into. Because of the economic and all the health pandemic, everything that's going on right now, um, there is uncertainty, and we are scared, and we should, or people won't look at us act like we're, we're not, you know, at times. But let's stick with this ship metaphor. We are all... We are all casting off to sea, and we know there's a storm, and we're going to go out very far. And so, in fact, so far you can't see shore, and we don't know the severity of the storm that we're going to hit. So let's. That's why culture matters, and that's why you want your ship ship ready. And there's something you can do right now, and that's why in this pandemic you have the responsibility to be positive and gooey because everything matters. How you say. People know that you're there and you're a strong captain at the sea and you're gonna put everything in that you have. And then it's and then get your ship ready for sea. Because we do not know, nobody knows, no economist knows. It's impossible to know what we have never walked through before. But it's all about your people. It's all about your relationship with your people inside and out your company. And I love the, the points that, that uh, Greta made were obviously aligned. Yeah. That is awesome. And just so everybody knows, um, Greta is actually going to be on Coffee Conversations in about a month from now. She is the treasurer on NERCA, and so and she's involved with National Women in Roofing. So we're really, Greta, thanks for being on this morning and um, sharing. I'm, I'm excited to hear more about what's going on in your world in, a, in about a month or so. <laughs> I'm excited, too. Hopefully, I'll um, we'll be reporting some better news. Um, like I said, we're just trying to do, we're taking this time to really perfect, you know, sometimes things happen for a reason. And what I advocate even to my friends and my network groups and fellow roofers is take this time to perfect um, some processes that maybe you haven't looked at in a while. Maybe your manuals for your team are a little bit outdated. Maybe you haven't certified your team to the highest level in the industry on new products, right? So take this time to really perfect. Um, don't take this time to panic. Don't take this time to, you know, Tell everybody, like, you know, I don't know if I can afford you. Uh, let's lay off everybody. Let's terminate everybody's contract. No, instead, use this time to really perfect everything about your team. Like, take a look at your website. View it. View everything on, on search the way a client would if they were searching for a roofing um, company. And, and take this time to, you know, take this time to slow down and breathe in your own brand and make sure that your vision aligns with what you thought it was. Because sometimes as entrepreneurs, and business owners, we we get so involved in the day to day operation. We've never probably had this time. You know, we've never had this much time off in our homes to look at everything. That um, is there's great. a good and a bad. That is that is so cool. Thank you, Greta, so much. And you are getting comments, and Charles, you're getting comments here from some um, amazing people that kind of are leading to a question. I want to make sure that we get in front of Charles um, that I'm kind of excited about. So, but. It goes right with Will Lorenz is on. Hello, Will. We're so happy to have you with General Coatings. And he says, always excited to hear Charles' passion, optimism, and willing to risk breaking the traditional norm. And Charles, one of the things you and I talked about that I'm kind of starting to, it's really formatted, I mean, coming into my mind is the term be bold, right? Be bold. Let's not be scared anymore. Um, even though there's a lot of scary stuff going out, but how can roofing contractors and companies and individuals be bold during this time um, to help them through it? Well, I, I think it, it starts with the way we see ourselves. And I, and I make the assumption, and I'm, I'm wrong in some cases. I know a lot of multi-generational roofers that all really saw the value, but it starts they always saw their self-value, but it starts in a little bit of self-actualization of I am a roofing pro. If you go back 10 years, being a roofer wasn't as sexy as your friends that owned the store. And then all those stores didn't seem so sexy as the trades had become. 
And then before even pre-COVID, being a service provider was really starting to be sexy. And sexy, I mean that as a metaphor of sellable, you know. And then since COVID's happened, again, it's the mindset. Since COVID's happened, um, the the essential needs that skyrocketed. In Southern California, when it doesn't rain, even if you have a leaky roof, folks don't generally spend money on their roof. They'll spend on vacations, on wine, on restaurants, on uh, extravagant things. And right now, there is a switch. And I think you have to be grateful that we're in a trade and you start by seeing yourself higher. Because if you don't see yourself high, then your boldness is going to come off as nastiness, that old barking that we used to do on the roofs, you know. But if you, being bold, it stands with, you know, how you how you see yourself. And, and again, also when you see yourself, you know, one of the, one of the things about CSR is in a country that, you know, we've discussed this, and I've discussed this with everybody on the board. I love being on the board, by the way. My term is almost up, and I love it. But one of my, I think the reasons I'm on the board is to talk about why we talk about this. Because I'll have so many rippers that we've talked to. Bill Good called over 200 rippers and asked them if they would join this program, and almost all of them said yes, uh, but... I lost my train of thought again. I'm sorry. I, I, this is the five year old twins. Pull me back. Where was I going there, Heidi? We were going on being bold and being part of associations, the NRCA. Yeah, being... So, so that's cool. I learned to be bold here when I saw myself higher. It went Bill Good, now Reed Ribble. And Reed Ribble is just this amazing leader. And being bold, then he's bold. I can take questions that were impossible to satisfy the whole crowd because the crowd was split. And he's bold because he makes it about us, about the people. And, he, and I paraphrase him all wrong, and I know he's probably giggling right now if he's listening. But you know what I, what he's made me see is that we're, we really are something, man. We really are those big, bold, big-hearted, big-shouldered, strong hands, skilled hand protectors that go out and protect everything that people love. And because of that... We need to stand together and advocate and watch us in D.C. Look at us. You're there. I'm there. Over 500 are there. We advocate on, that, on, on roofing day in D.C. And he says, let's advocate and let's educate. Look at what we're creating right now. We're spending millions of dollars, and I'm watching all of these great companies pioneer the certification program, the pro-cert program. And he says, he goes, and, and then he also very, in a, in a really awesome way, took this thing that Bill Good started with Ronald McDonald House, and he said, and let's take care of the community. So really how you be bold is and you start with how you see yourself. And when you allow yourself to be that, that roofing professional that advocates, that believes in educating, and that takes care of the community, then you see yourself higher, and then you can stand and be bold. And we really do see ourselves that way, right? but also we are – we are received that way. I really do want to, you know, it's like I love to self-actualize companies so they see themselves higher. I mean, that's what corporate social responsibility is. It's like companies, I, I don't need to cheat anybody. I can actually really be generous and help the community. But I also love to self-actualize people because sometimes we just don't see ourselves higher until somebody else does. And I only see myself higher today because somebody else saw something in me. And that's that's the first part of being bold. And I think that's where I should stop. See yourselves higher and show up and do and genuine and find a way that you can show up every day and be the best that you can be. And you know what I, I did this morning? I knew I was going to call up with you at 545. So I got up at three. I was going to get up at three. I got up at 320 and I went for a bike ride. I went for a oh, bike cow. ride in the middle of the night and I saw three owls, <laughs> three different owls. I think they were three different species. So when I, by the time I got to this meeting, I'm able to be in a good mood. I had something kind of magic happen to me this morning and that's how you be bold. You show up with all of you and you know that you're going to try to do the right thing. And you it's so much so that you're going to say that. Well, you know, and Charles, I want to keep going on that because one of the things I, first of all, I love the owls and I think you're crazy for biking at three in the morning, but I love it. Um, the uh, Michelle is Michelle Boykin. Michelle, I'm just going to read your thing because we're getting close to the hour, but um. 
Michelle was saying in here, the postcards that Antis does is always also a great way to show how they empower everyone to be involved in what they love. And she also um, pointed out a great point that the roofing industry gives opportunities for major success to those with or without an education. But I, I and I think you've hit on all of those points perfect. And I'm going to bring it around just a little bit on that be bold and on the postcard part that Michelle mentioned, you and I have had many discussions about how it's sometimes, especially for our generation, I think for Gen X boomers, it's a little bit harder is to talk about what you're doing, to talk about what you're giving, how you're doing it and to actually then put it into your marketing. So I think about the fact that you're driving an Antis truck, you're delivering food, Nobody wants to say, oh, that's great advertising for your, the fact that your truck has, is, you know, with all of your um, logoed Antis and you're out there giving back because you're really giving back because it just feels good. But there's a marketing side to this. And there's a little bit of being bold in the fact of being able to share that story. Can you talk about that? Yeah, great point. Yeah, I said earlier that it's a mixed play, and I'm really, really good at switching back and forth to the big heartedness of it, but also the very expensive business play. And the business play is called cause marketing. What I advertise about how great you are if you can show it in a real story, and partnerships with nonprofits show it in a real story because one thing about it, they they, they investigate. If you're not doing it, they're not going to share it with you, or at least not in a real way. And so being bold is, I meant to say this earlier, I got sidetracked, I'm sorry, but when I first started getting uh, contractors and Bill Good to donate roofs, they said, we're not going to talk about it, you know, and, and it was like, they're not going to talk about it, kind of out of this, this baby boomer bias that we all grew up with, you know, like, it's kind of like, I don't know if this is biblical, but I'm going to say it, it's not to offend, it's like, um, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. I remember that, and then I remember something about you'll, and you can only be rewarded if it's secret. And I get it, and I felt that way, I felt that way, I felt that way. Yes, you have to talk about it. I might come back to every one of you guys that have said that to me, and there's literally been a hundred, a hundred I've had this conversation with. I might come back to you, and you've let me win this argument is if we don't talk about it, how's it going to grow? If we don't talk about this model of us coming together and donating the skill to provide this roof to keep this family safe and dry, then how is somebody else going to know that they could do the same thing? Imagine the if we talk about it. And I think that's why we win that argument. And that's why the NRCA does a much better job today. Rupert's Coffee Shop, look at all your stories you guys post about these people doing great things. And you know what? They're not hard to find. It's happening in every city across the country by these big-hearted roofing pros. And so, yes, you must be bold. You must talk about it. You owe it to your brand to talk about it. If you don't talk about it, you won't be understood inside or outside the company. And so it, it's a survival tool to talk about it. Let me just go one step deeper. You don't want to talk about it because of this bias. It feels wrong. It feels like you could be cursed. I'm just, I'm over exaggerating to make a point. But what you do is you talk about it. If it's real, talk about it. If it's fake, if it's an annual basket drive that you're making it look like an annual thing that you're doing, I mean, every people, authenticity is an important marketable concept today. But today, if it's real, talk about it. I promise you this. Yes, your competitors will laugh at you and say, that's not real. But if it is real, you have the most powerful concept now in marketing. Because what happens is those detractors will talk about you, and then everyone else will listen to them, and they'll look at you like they never saw you before. And they'll realize exactly what's going on. Oh, my God, they are doing this. They won't tell them. He'll be your best advertiser. He will tell everybody that it's not real. He'll keep saying it. It's their gimmick. It's their gimmick. It's their gimmick. But that, every time he says gimmick, that will stick to him, not to you. So if it's real, talk about it. Be bold. And by the way, follow me on social media. I make, I make missteps all the time in how to talk about it. I've been learning. I've been doing this for 10 years. Follow those companies that do this. I follow Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola speaks very corporate social responsibility talk. Follow us and be bold. You can make mistakes. In fact, some of our mistakes 
are just like that criticism. It makes people really look. Why they say that? Ooh, that makes that's like fingernails on chalkboard. They're saying they're donating rich and transforming lives. Yeah. I mean, the first time that was assigned to us was happened after humanity. After we joined the board, after we started donating all the roofs in the newspaper, they, they posted an ad and they said, "Answer this roofing, donating roofs, transforming lives." I thought I was going to get struck by lightning. It felt almost like blasphemy that I would say that, but I did it. They said it. Eventually. We said, can we use what you said? They said, sure. And we started using the Habitat logo. It's in our brand because we were donating all the roofs. And we were saying, you know, we're, we're donating roofs and we're transforming lives. And then when I met you, we had just right about that time, we changed one of our things to changing the world one roof at a time. That was hard to write. I was, I scrapped it. We had scrapped that concept. We weren't going to be bold like that anymore. And one of the VPs from one of the big, smart corporate social responsibilities walked into our Antis campus and he saw the table. We laid it out. He said, we can't do that. He goes, you have to do that. He goes, if you don't make that claim, then how is it ever going to be possible? So I believe, as you know, Heidi, that thoughts become work. It's become act and it's become things that are done. And so I think in terms of being bold, if we didn't say it, if we didn't talk about it, if I didn't go to Bill Good and say, you know, hey, let's do November, let's donate all the habitat roofs. When he came to me to lift the brand of roofing and said, what can we do to lift the brand of roofing? You know, it's like, I, 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 if I didn't think it was possible, then none of this would ever start. If Bill Good didn't come to me and say, hey, can you join the alliance and make this big donation? I said no, and then eventually said yes. If I didn't eventually say yes, it's only by opening our minds to it that it's possible to build the bridge to it. And so it's a really big time to be bold and curious. And, if, and by the way, being adaptive doesn't mean that your brain has to be adaptive. I'm super adaptive. My brain travels slowly from concept to concept, but I surround myself with super adaptive people and I welcome them to fail in the moment trying new things. And that's, that's how you can be bold and with corporate social responsibility and in a super adaptive time when everything's changing, office space is changing. The app, the, what we use, how we communicate is changing. I mean, I love all these boards, but I bet you now when we go back to live board meetings, there's probably going to be an accommodation of a Zoom screen for those that want to attend that way. I don't know which is going to be more likely attended, but it's <laughs> going to change. The new normal is going to change. If you expect things to be the same and you're just dug your head down and getting these jobs done, then you're probably not going to be around. And that's a bold statement, and I apologize to come off that way. But I just want you to be open-minded and surround yourself with younger, adaptive minds and let them experiment. Let them try new things. Create a budget for it. It's called R&D in the big, in the big uh, companies where things move slow. Now everybody's going to have a concept of R&D and how they survive in the new world. They, you know, Charles, and before we get to, we're getting so close, but I wanted to reach out. Rudy has had a couple, Rudy Gutierrez with Shell Roofing has had a couple of comments and they're just awesome. Rudy, are you on there? Do you want to say a couple words? I wasn't sure. I'm kind of putting him on the spot. Just unmuted you, Rudy. Okay. How are you? Excellent topics. Whoa, hey, this is my morning hair, so take that off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no worries. You're okay, Rudy. Go ahead. <laughs> Charles, I'm so proud of you. Uh, I followed your all of the things that you do and, uh, you know, what you did with the blood drive. Uh, you've motivated us to do great things in our own community. And... Um, I'm just so proud to be your friend and uh, be a part of this association. Um, I really appreciate your comments on boldness because that's how I know you. You are very bold about what you do and very passionate. I am a, I am a nutcase about the roofing industry. I'm also a fanatic and crazy about my industry. I love my industry. And uh, I just want, you know, I appreciate that you can share how much the industry has done for you and what you're able to give to the community because of the industry and what you brought to the, the NRCA to uh, associations, actually uh, charities that really need 
groups, large groups like the roofing industry and a generous industry like the roofing industry, uh, the Ronald McDonald House, uh, which we're involved because of you. So, you know, I, I man, I, I love you. I, I, I appreciate you, uh, you being so bold and motivating us to do great things. Well, thanks. You know, Rudy, I just want to say, just because something's happening live, and I love to talk about what's really happening, the stories, what's really happening, helps us contextualize how to really get involved. But, you know, Rudy, I know you so well, Rudy, because we we lobbied together in Washington. We've been on the same teams, gone to the same senator's office, with uh, in the same congressman's office with Will Lorenz, who was on earlier. And and we we really have a lot of alignment, but it's because of the NRCA, but, but we're both board members. But you also were on that first project, on the first Ronald McDonald House project. We went to Camp Idlewild, I'm sorry, Camp Ronald McDonald House Good Times in Idlewild, California, where we donated those gifts, and you were there. And the reason I bring this up is that's the network we have in the NRCA. It's so powerful. There's people like you, Heidi, there's people like Rudy. Yesterday, I got an email from our local rep of the House, of which I'm a board member, the Ronald McDonald House, Orange County, and we're a member of the chapter, the SoCal chapter of eight other homes, and we have an OSHA inspection, and it turns out that I think three of the roofs within our chapter need safety uh, rails up on the roof. Well, I happen to know that that's part of... A Rudy's specialty with shell roofing and, you know, this accessories on a roof. And I happen to know that he also has this same big hearted relationship with Ronald McDonald House. And there'll be, I didn't, we haven't talked about this part, but I know Rudy, there'll be a gift there. He'll be donating what he can to help these houses because he's in, in alignment with me and he believes that, that it's unimaginable to ignore sick kids. And there's a really awesome thing that's happening in the roofing industry. And, and we'll back up one more time. I, I, Heidi, I'm going to tell a one-minute version of the story right before we met. The reason I went to the Orlando show is where I met you guys, by the way. The reason I went to the Orlando show is the previous trade show I'd gone to, I had a complete fail. I had, I'd gone for one reason, to go to a manufacturer who's going to give me a deal. I walked into the room, and my competitor was in the meeting with me, and the, and I looked at the eyes of the manufacturer rep, and his eyes said, oh, shit. He yeah. forgot he invited both to a meeting, and we were competitors. I turned back. I went home from Vegas having nothing from that trip, and I was so fed up with not having purpose in my industry and not having alignment with people that saw a greater cause. And I went back to Orlando because I was told that – if, that there is a building day that they built that before the convention starts. And I thought, I'm going to go to this habitat type build at Rebuilding Orlando. And I went there, and that's where I met you, Heidi. And, and it was like the best of the plans that ever came up in my head. This was one of the greatest concepts because I'm, most of the time my concepts are wrong. But man, when I said I'm going to go meet the purposeful people and it's never going to be the same again, I went and I met you guys. And it was just like a magical reunion because there's so many people with so many that, you know what the funny thing is with the roofing industry, Rudy, if you have a problem, you'll call me. If I have a problem, I'll call you and you'll tell me anything. I'll tell you anything to help you. That's what the NRCA Brotherhood is. And that's why I'm so, you know, I'm, I don't want to say I'm sad, but I'm a little bit sad that I'm turning off the board in a couple of weeks because this association of being in this family of of those that monitor and lift and protect this great trade, it's one of the greatest things I've ever done that I've ever been able to be a part of. And, you know, I'm going to be on my best behavior in those committees so I can come back in after I term out. You know, I'm not putting any pressure on anybody, but I want you to know it's a great honor to serve those amazing providers, all of you people in the roofing industry, man. I love our space. I love our people. I love what we do. And I love the way right now we're being appreciated and we have a chance to really lift our industry. And right now there's going to be changes like every industry is going to be rocky roads. But my God, look, we've got a skill. We've got a trade and everybody needs a roof and they need it higher in comparison. They needed it from other things last month. So I'm sorry, Rudy, I just tripped on you there. But I'm really grateful to hear from you, and it's an honor to serve with you. You're a great board member. You do so many great things for our association, including representing this, this you are a, you are a Mexican-American set. You, you are 
you really bring purpose to this alignment of our people, all of our people from every demographic. And I'm so grateful for what you've done. Both of you've done for, I forget the name of the committee, but the, what do you call the committee yeah. you guys are on? Well, okay. So diversity and inclusion. Yes. Diversity and inclusion. I'm going to. I am, I am going to, um, Charles, I mean, honestly, we could keep going. I love these conversations. And Rudy, thank you so much. We've known each other for so long. Um, yes, I just want to know, real quick, both Rudy and Charles are RCS and Michelle, and we've got some other folks on here, too, that um, are... RCS influencers, and they're talking about this stuff all the time. So you can read about what Rudy's doing with NRCA, what Charles is doing, what they're doing, cause marketing, um, and how they're being bold. I just think this this conversation, this coffee conversation does not need to end. So um, please get on there. I also, Charles and everyone who's still on, I know we're at the 701 time frame, but I just want to say thank you for being adaptable and flexible this morning because you know what transparency working from home working remote all the things that go along with this are um, really all kind of happened this morning on this coffee conversation and um but we made it work because we are authentic and true and charles thank you so much for being on today this will be a great memory i thank you heidi love it anytime next time with video Next time with video, we will practice with you, Charles, a couple times beforehand. How's that? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Next week, we have Michelle Boykin and Curtis Sutton from Rackley Roofing on with coffee. And they're the RT3 Innovators of the Year. They're working remotely. They are doing some absolutely amazing things culturally and also within Tennessee um, and inspiring companies across the country so please join us next week next thursday charles you need to get up and call in and ask michelle and curtis questions okay i'll do it okay <laughs> we'll see you all next week thank you see you next week thanks, thanks.